Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about Doomfist. Now, I know it's still a bit early. He's only been out for a few days. He's still in the PCR, and I want to put off talking about him in too much depth until he's released, until I can watch some VODs of some teams playing him, so I really get a good idea of what he's all about. But, there, is, there are some things that I can say as a preliminary sort of statement that will at least set up the community expectations and sort of give an introduction for players who want to learn more about the hero. So we're just going to have a bit of a chat about it. When there are VODs, I will do an analysis with VODs supporting my claims, but right now this is just me talking. In fact, I have a series coming up I, uh, I want to do where it's just going to be me talking and walking the dog at the same time. It's going to be called Overwalk. Let me know what you think about Overwalk. Just like a daily blog sort of thing. I think that'd be pretty cool. People on Twitter seem to like it. Let me know what you think. But, Doomfist. First, let's talk about his strengths and weaknesses. So is he OP? Or is he UP? Or is he B? Balanced. Well, the community seems to be a little bit split. Some people are like, oh my god, he's so OP, he does so much damage. And some other people are like, oh, he's really terrible. I think that the strongest part of him is his ultimate, which is ironic considering a lot of people say his ultimate is weak, which is unbelievable. His ultimate is so, so good, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Doomfist's main strength is that when he goes all in, he does a ridiculous amount of damage. The most burst damage in the game, reliably. If you go back and watch yesterday's combo video, you saw how he could do 3, 4, 5, if he has a wall, 600 damage in a period of only a few seconds, and it's not too difficult to land. So that's never been seen in Overwatch before. That's a tremendous amount of damage. So that's one strength. His other strength is that his ultimate is absolutely insane. It's pretty much the best initiation tool. It's like on par with Zarya's ultimate in terms of initiating. Basically, you ult, you go and you insta-kill one of their supports. They can't possibly avoid it without it, like a Zarya bubble. And uh, from there, you just you get like a billion shield because everyone you hit gives you 30 shield. And from there, you take over the fight. Right now, you can actually contest the point in the PTR with your ultimate, which is confirmed to be going straight away. That is insane. Contesting the point with your ultimate is totally overboard. But uh, they're going to change that. You can't contest the point with your ultimate when Doomfist actually hits live. So there we go. Those are his two strengths, pretty much. He does an insane amount of damage, and his ultimate is also insane. All right, so his... His real only core strength is the fact that he does a ton of damage. Now let's talk about his weaknesses. And I didn't miss his mobility, by the way. He has a ton of mobility, but mobility isn't actually one of his strengths. And let me explain why. Mobility is more than just being able to go real fast. And Doomfist can go real fast. It's cool how he can get from spawn to the point really quickly. He can dash around, he can do all those things, but mobility is a combination of things. You need to be able to move around a lot, but it needs to be freedom of movement. Take something like a Genji. He can really do whatever he wants. He can dash in, dash out. So he has a lot of freedom of mobility. Plus he can do the wall jump, the double jump. Whereas Doomfist, he has to be right next to you. So right there, he already loses a ton of freedom as far as his positioning is concerned. So a lot of his mobility is wasted on getting into that one specific position he always needs to be in. If you think of, if you compare to like a Doomfist to a Tracer or a Genji, a Doomfist technically goes faster than any of them, but Tracer and Genji are much more mobile in that they can dash in, do a bit of damage, dash out, still do a bit of damage, run away, or dash in again. You know, you never know. They can do all sorts of things, where Doomfist is pretty much he's out or he's in. There's no real position, <laughs> there's no real, you know, nuance to his positioning in that regard. And that is pretty much the core of his weakness. He has a lot of health, it's just that he's forced to be next to you, so it's not a lot of health. He has a lot of damage and mobility, but he's forced to be next to you, so the mobility is not such a big deal. His biggest weakness is that he's a melee hero. Doomfist's other big weakness is that everything is tied to cooldowns. Everything, including his gun, is even tied to a little mini cooldown, right? I have a funny clip of, I've gone to their back lines, killed a couple people, saw their shield generator, and I just couldn't kill it. Like, I just couldn't kill the enemy team's shield generator because I had no more bullets left. I had no cooldowns. So that's it, I just had to like go away, I had to run away even though there was no one there. Basically, if we take all these strengths of he does a ton of damage, but he doesn't have a lot of mobility and, uh, or he doesn't have a lot of positional strength, I guess we should call it, and everything's tied to cooldowns, basically this is an all-in hero. All-in hero, 
that's what he is. He can't be played any other way, pretty much. What team comp wants that? Well, of course, the all-in dive comp that you see, you know, with the Zenyatta Lucio or even just the solo Lucio sometimes with all DPS heroes like the one Winston. Everyone just jumps in. They try to kill you real fast and that's it. Doomfist would fit pretty well into that composition, but that's not really the most popular. Usually we see more of a mid-rangey dive comp where you have uh, you have the D.Va maybe, you, you have a dive, but you also have other things to help you out maybe you have a soldier maybe like i said you have a diva where you have a little bit more wiggle room you can take a fight a little bit more it's not all in per se so doomfist will do one of two things on offense either he will be not he'll be suboptimal because all in dive is generally suboptimal compared to uh, you know the other types of dive you can do that are less all in or he'll make all in dive super op and better than any other dive strats, and so everyone's just gonna be all in diving everyone all the time with Doomfist. Those are the two possibilities I feel for him on offense. He's not he's never gonna go into any sort of mid-rangey, pushy, or uh, tanky type of composition, because he just can't do that. Remember that tanky compositions rely on a consistent, steady source of DPS, range DPS, to be able to damage for them while they turtle up. They want something like a soldier who does a lot of damage over a long period of time as opposed to Doomfist who does a lot of damage very shortly but not so much good sustained damage. That being said though, and a reason why I also want to avoid talking about Doomfist too much before he's out is that he might be Overwatch's shining star to save us from the cold grip of the dive meta and that's because he's super anti-dive. Remember before how I was saying that he has really good mobility, he can move around, but his positioning still winds up being bad because it's all wasted trying to get into position. Well, if they're diving on you, guess what? You're already in position, so suddenly you have infinity mobility and like infinity damage all in a really short amount of time, which is really good against dive, plus you have a lot of CC. He has like three knockbacks and to keep people away from your supports, Doomfist is like the ultimate counter to dive, while also being the ultimate asset to all-in dive comps. So, which one's gonna triumph? I don't know. If I were to make a guess though, just imagine this. Imagine that you're trying to dive in, you're like, okay, yeah, let's get our Genji, get our Trace, all right, we're cool. We got our thing, we're good at Overwatch, let's go kill him, guys. And you dive in, and there's a Doomfist. I feel like you just die, right? Like you just, you just can't do it? You just can't do that strat anymore against Doomfist? I feel like you can't. Let me know what you think in the comments. I really think that Doomfist's anti-dive potential is probably, defensive potential is probably even better than his offensive potential because you don't need to waste your mobility on getting into position. You just start out in melee range with all your skills, which is like the most OP thing you can ever do as Doomfist. So actually, I think it's a pretty likely scenario that you might see teams pick up Doomfist as a McCree alternative because uh, McCree he like he's a DPS but he also has a little bit of peel in there where Doomfist is just like all peel all the time super DPS but he doesn't have a gun uh, so I think he even takes the idea of McCree one step further although I can see how it's difficult to connect those two ideas so we're gonna leave it at that for those of you who want to maybe get into playing Doomfist uh, just a couple things. First of all, he is a DPS hero, 100%, not a tank in any um, way, shape, or form. But I'm, I think a lot of people kind of understand that at this point. In addition, he's a very disciplined hero. So you might see gameplay of Doomfist and focus on the, the, you know, the flashy part where he goes and he does his combos and be like, oh man, this is like Genji. He's very different from Genji, and the Genji is very much a quick twitch type of hero where it's all about like your reflexes and dashing back and forth resetting. Doomfist is a very patience based and very calm hero really. When you execute your combos it's kind of maybe can be a little bit frenetic but a lot of what you're going to be doing is sitting behind your teammates, sitting behind your supports on defense or behind your tanks on offense, slowly finding a way to work yourself in and then once you're in position you go in. So if you like that sort of strategic gameplay comboed with some, well, combos, gotcha there, then, and maybe a little bit of fun action-based gameplay when you actually get into the fight, 
then this hero is absolutely for you. And I was talking about Guilty Gear yesterday too. If you're into fighting games, you're into this hero. He shares a lot of elements where it's like patience and also execution at the same time. I'm not gonna give any more thoughts on Doomfist until he comes out. Knock on wood, maybe. I might just go back on that promise, but at the moment, I don't have anything else to say about the hero until I can see VODs of him. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Let me think. Let me know what you think about Overwalk, man. I think that's a cool idea. I think we'll I will make a billion off it. Trust me, you should invest. <laughs> anyway, uh, never forget to stay positive, and have a great day. Peace out, guys.